<laughs> Doesn't actually matter. Here's Zest. Seven and eight. He's got that downwards purple arrow. But that's, you know, like you mentioned, he did just win IEM. Yeah, that's um, a about a month and a half ago. That's or so. a load of poop, in my opinion, Valdez. That's just the pro league arrow, man. We we've had some qualms with that arrow, uh, to say the least. I would over have the course of this season. Strongly disagree, but yeah, if it's purely based on pro league, then it's sure. It's just the last five games of pro league. Zest, so. Zest has had a bit of a rough time uh, in his pro league matches, and that's about it. Yeah. I have to say, definitely like in the arrows from last season, where they took uh, everything into account, you know, including their outside of Pro League results. Here's Daisy. He's only played one game in Pro League ever, and it yep. was a loss. It was a loss to Journey. Uh, and besides that, Daisy got eliminated in uh, Starly Qualifier Round 1, got eliminated by Trap in the GSL Qualifier Round 1. He, uh, he's kind of came back to career, and, uh, you know, he's, he's getting to experience what everyone else gets to experience when they come to career. Yeah. The beat down. Yep. The slap down. <laughs> The curb stomp, <laughs> kicks in the stomach, in the ribs. It yeah. hurts, man. All that horrible stuff that foreigners <laughs> get when they come over here. Well, man, we're going to jump into game number two here. A PvP between KT and Startel Yoi Flash Wolves. It's going to be on Dead Wing. Let's jump into that game right now. Quiet cheer. <laughs> Down here in the bottom right in the red for KT Rollster Zest. Who is that cheer for? I think it was Startel. And Startel on the top left, it is Daisy. Come on, Daisy. Beat you me can do it, buddy. He beat me in an MLG once. Oh, did he? He beat me with Immortal Lowlands twice. Oh, man. That's got a sting. Yeah, that was after I eliminated MC with and him. MC tried to mow the lens too, but Daisy's was just a little bit better. <laughs> Says a lot about Daisy, huh? Yeah, he's, he's great at immortal lens, that's for sure. But we don't really see that in PvP. No. Oh, unfortunately. Unfortunately for Daisy. Yeah. I would have to think that he's gotta go for something a little bit out of the ordinary. You see sometimes these players and uh, maybe even in the position that Startail is in where they're 0 5 negative ten. They have no chance of making it to the playoffs. They're only, uh, you know, the one thing they can maybe hope for is getting seventh place instead of eighth place over prime. And I don't even know if that gives you extra points, to be Ooh. totally honest. You got Stardust in the house. Oh, true as well. Look at these handsome gentlemen. Going to be Jack G. Oh, it's Jack G. <laughs> no, it's, it's true, man. Whatever, dude. Either way, I'm going to. It's true, man. Whatever, like. <laughs> Um, oh, man. Well, you know, what can you do when you get that wrong? What can you do? We got an early gate from Zest. It's very dark in the back of the studio. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. Sure. We'll use the wolf excuse, like our monitor's just a little bit too dark. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Matt. It's, it's bugging. Our camera's bugging. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Ah, uh, yes. Well, pretty similar builds for now. Um, yeah, I guess a little bit faster of a, a gateway yep. for our Zest. And Zest, looks like he might be going for a bit of a proxy do here. This probe in the, the mid top. Zest does this sometimes. Uh, I think this is going to be Stargate. And yeah. he did this against Billowy as well um, in the playoffs of maybe round two against MVP when Billowy all killed KT. Okay. And um, he just took him too lightly. He's like, oh, I think I'm just better than you. I don't think you can deal with my proxy Stargate. Yeah, and there it is. And, you know, it, it does fantastic damage and can really put them on the back foot, especially when it's this early. Very nice sort of proxy positioning for it. Yeah. Daisy's going to know something's up, though. He goes in there and he sees pretty much nothing. He sees a missing pylon. He should know something's on the way. He's going to Kerner Boost out just to stalk on the Mothership Core just to be safe. Get that extra energy on the Mothership Core to try to deal with uh, any eeriness that can come his way. I don't know. I think Daisy should be fine. Even if he like doesn't scout exactly what this is, if he's done any kind of research on Zest and the kind of player he is, he should have some idea. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, look with that. Okay, never mind. 
I was worried for a second this Oracle kind of rally plan was to the top right, and I'm like, well, didn't you just scout that, Zest? Oh, Daisy's gonna see it. Oh, it. What? Oh, oh my god! I didn't see it. Oh, that was so close. Daisy's gonna be kicking himself. Yeah. Kind of hurts. Like, he doesn't know exactly what it is yet, but at least he's gonna get his units in position. That's one thing he's got going for him. He's gonna have two stalkers and. Not sure about the energy on that Mothership Core, but it's, it's got to be pretty close to 100 at this point. Yeah, currently sitting at about 85, so this mm. Oracle can swoop in once, but with two Stalkers, not going to be much, I don't think. Oh, a bit of misclicks from Zest. Ooh, just one kill. We got a follow-up from Daisy. It looks like he's going to go for three-gate blink. Mm, looks like it. No yeah. blink on the way just yet. There we go. Yeah, he should be safe now. Oracle's going to see everything. Yeah, this is one of the kind of builds you can do when you see your opponent going for a very fast Stargate. You may even hide a Dark Shrine. He knows that maybe that Oracle is going to be out of position. He's going to see the Blink with the Chrono Boost there with his Oracle, and he's going to think 100% this is Blink. But maybe he just goes for DTs instead and totally tricks Zest. You know, that could be it. But at the same time, you know, there's always going to be the problem. Of if this Oracle stays alive, it can detect. So there's still detection on the map for Zest if he desperately needs it. But at the same time, like, when you, when you see your opponent going for Blink, your response is like, okay, I get my counter Blink. Maybe get my Robo a little bit later. Mm. And uh, if that Oracle is still, like, totally on the opposite side of the map, and he just like totally misses the DTs. He's gonna catch this probe. That is one good thing for Zest. Yeah. But the pylons came out. The ones that needed to be on the map, so he can warp in if he wants to be aggressive. Absolutely. Still no Robo for Zest. Where's that Oracle? Looks like it's making its way slowly back to the base. So he knows this is a possibility. And uh, well, no Dark Shrine at all. No. So Doesn't look like it. Luckily for Zest. And did he get his warp gate just a little late? Feels like he did, and he just got it then. So he's finally starting to catch up uh, with Stalker count. Like Zest for now, just going to play very defensively. He's worried about any sort of counterattack that could come from Daisy. Maybe suspecting something that's not going to be there. But we do see Daisy bumping in three Stalkers down the bottom. Yeah, I like this. You, you can just keep your Mothership Core at home. Make an Observer for high ground vision instead. Keep your Mothership Core there just in case of the Oracle uh, for the defense. and. Look at this, he's got nine Stalkers coming across the map. They're going to group up here soon. I think that's against the eight of Zest that don't have Blink yet. Yeah, very close to it. Look at that Oracle, it did come home. Maybe he was fearful of those DTs. Mm. He's like, you know what, I'll keep it for now, I'll save the energy on it in case I do need the uh, Envision. Nice little scout from Zest. That probe's actually going to see the Nexus. Oh, yeah, that's important. That's the money scout right there. Mm -hmm. Give Zest to get his own. Uh, you know what? Daisy with the Immortals on the way already. He is kind of getting that composition advantage plus that earlier Nexus. I actually really like his position yeah. in this game. Definitely feeling good for him here. Um, Zest definitely playing a little bit from behind. But then again, these guys are cross position, position dead wings. So any kind of attack that's going to try to come across the map, it's going to take so long. And in PvP, that defender's advantage is pretty huge. So I think we're just going to see a bit of a longer one here. We may see some harassment from Zest with the Blink Stalkers. He loves to do this. Sometimes it doesn't work out for him, where he uh, goes for just a little bit too much. Like he's trying too hard, and then oh, he loses yeah. a lot of Stalkers. We've seen that happen against Creator a lot of times. That was his darkest time, I think, like when he was actually just overly aggressive with Stalkers. And it really did cost him games because they just simply counterattack. I think he's learned from that, though, and he'll probably just do what he can, get away, you know, triggering a photon overcharge. Getting out of there is decent enough, I think. Ooh, looks like he has found an Observer. Oh, no, that is a big kill. That's going to really slow down any sort of information from Daisy. Has yep. no idea what composition he's going to be going, or what he's got planned, what upgrades are on the way. Speaking of the second immortal here, Daisy is. We'll see if he goes for another Observer. I think he can. I mean, usually you don't want to make too many Immortals in this match. Maybe you make like two, maybe three. Then you kind of transition into something else. Hmm. Yeah, usually you want to see like two or three and then go into that straight into Colossus, especially if it's going to be cross map like this. You have a lot of time to get into your, your comfortable composition you want to go into. 
But I also guess it depends on how aggressive you want to be. Obviously, Immortal's going to come out a lot sooner than Colossus will. It's like no Colossus for Zest either for now. Not even any Immortal. Simply investing a lot into Stalkers. He's currently sitting at about 14 Stalkers, actually. Yeah, we finally see that Robo Bay being queued here for Daisy. So he's going to be the first guy to make the transition. He's got to just pull those Immortals down. I feel like it should be just fine against this. Yeah, you cannot be trading with Immortals like this. But yeah, you get to trade one for one. Sees what's up. Sees the uh, composition. And yeah, now we go into the Bay Possessed. So he's going to be trying to play catch up in the composition once again. Yeah. This is kind of what I was talking about, man. It's just cross map Deadwing, and it's like, well, we can't really kill each other for a very long time, so who's going to go for the the later tech first? Will we see Stargates? Will we see even Tempest on the way a little bit later? Probably. I mean, these guys can get into pretty comfortable positions in the third base as well. He's going to those big Colossus counts. We'll have like a giant war eventually to see which Death Bolt is better and whose positioning is better. Usually the way things end up on Deadwing if they're going to be pretty stale into the mid-game like this. Zest is going to be the one pushing the issue with the third base there. And I like this a lot. Look at that. He's going to deny a scout. Wow. Oh, that is so important as well. Very meticulous. Just making sure to deny as much scouting as possible. That's pretty huge because Daisy doesn't know right now if he's just, if Zest is just going full on two base, you know, making a gigantic army and coming for an attack, or if he is transitioning into more economy, getting a third base, or what kind of tech he's even going for. So it's a pretty huge deny on that scout. There's another Phoenix coming towards the left side. I think it should have an easier time of going for that. Daisy's got to be very careful about blinking over there and dealing with that pylon because all the stalkers of Zest defending for now. Yeah, I'm really liking Zest's position. He's going to be that whole base up for the longest time. Colossus, first one is just about to come out. There we go. So uh, I'm really liking the position from Zest. I don't think, uh, I don't really think we see like a window of opportunity for Daisy to even go for an attack from here. Nah. He just, you know, he's just basically forced into going for a much later Nexus, and that's what we see. And the Templar Archives also a lot earlier for Zest. So he's kind of getting ahead in composition and we can even see movement from Zest on the map. You know, once his Archons are out in the map, he's got enough Colossus that he's happy to try and you know, push the issue here. Might even actually just go for it, try and deny the third base of Daisy and stay up a whole base. Yeah. It's just kind of the weird way that PvP works out sometimes. It's like you can't attack each other, so it's like who's going to be greedier and go for the tech first? Who's going to go for that third base first? They usually do get ahead because there's no way to punish it. Mm. And uh, Zest, I feel like, just having a slightly better uh, knowledge of this matchup so far. He's showing, like, a bit more experience, right? Yeah, like, I look exactly. at him like he's got a lot, a lot more experience in what to do in this mid-game, how to go into the late game a little bit better. He gets everything just a little bit quicker. He's already making the transition to Tempests, adding that Fleet Beacon and a, a second Stargate, probably one in a better position. <laughs> so he doesn't just give it away when he decides to go for it, adding another one in his main base. That'd be funny if he just... Queues up Ooh. some Tempest at that other Starport, or Stargate rather, just like flies him back to his army. Yeah, and I really like the fact that we see Revelations going down on like both Nexuses and stuff uh, from that Oracle that stayed alive for so long. Just he has like a full idea of what the composition is and what's going on in Daisy's base this whole time. We saw Zest go for that uh, Templar Archives, but he never made any Templar. He just decided, okay, you're you're committing heavily to the Colossi, so instead I'll just go for Tempest. Kind of mm. just, you know, put a lot of gas into that instead. Oh, wow. He's even making a Tempest from that proxy style. Yeah, man. <laughs> Balls of Steel. I was kind of saying it as a joke, but he just doesn't care. He just doesn't care. He's actually going to add a fourth Nexus as well. He is so confident right now. He thinks he knows, well, he essentially does know everything that's going on in Daisy's base. He knows yeah. how much space he has. He's got that contain, oh, that man. very light contain with the Blink Stalkers as well. Daisy never got the scout on the Tempest. He has no idea. He's adding a second robotics facility. Oh. That's just for pumping out as many Colossi as possible. And what is the direct counter to Colossi it's in this matchup? It's Tempest. Tempest is going to do the work, man. And these Blink Stalkers are going to see exactly what's happening. Sees the Death Bolt. Moving across the map, he's like, well, I got the hot cannon for that on the way. It should be nice and easy. Yeah, he should have no problem. 
that super slow, just clunky composition out of Daisy is going to take forever to get across the map. And then by that time, you may even have like six Tempests. Yeah, well, that's about as many as you need to uh, pretty much annihilate them, right? It's going to yeah. be one-shotting for days. I wonder if that would be a one-shot or like a two-shot. Um, You're like looking at the exact numbers right now. <laughs> I can't do the math there. Either. If it's five Tempests, five they tempests. do 80 the massive. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be more than enough. Yeah. That's 400 damage straight up. Yeah. And each Colossus has 200 health, 150 shields. So, one shots for days. You were right, Lindley. <laughs> one shots for days. As long as you got five, you're golden. Currently see five. So he does have that one shot potential on these Colossi. And we do see about, I think it's eight Colossus for Daisy right now. That's the majority of his army right there. Oh, boy. I think Zest is just going to go ahead and crush this one. It's like they're finally meeting up for the first time. Daisy's going to be like, uh-oh, you've got five Tempests. Uh, what do I do now? He sees it. He's like, well, crap. Yeah, he immediately backs off. He he needs time. He needs something else in this composition. He's trying to make Archons. There's like a warp prism out in the middle of the map that has a, a Colossus inside it as well. Oh, yeah. That would have been a tragedy. And yeah, this fourth base, this is definitely given up. I don't see how Daisy can possibly engage into this. Look at this. You were talking about the revelations from before just on the army, but now with all these Tempests out, it's going to be even more useful. You can see the entire entire army from so far away and get those super long-range shots down. Looks like he's just going to deny the mining here at the fourth base while he's got his own, and I don't know. Zest is totally controlling the game from here, man. Yeah, he's going to get that bank up. He knows exactly what's going on. Yeah, that revelation is so strong. Never being able to kill that oracle. Worst thing in the world. Oh, finally gets it with the blink, <laughs> but not before the revelation goes down once again. Got the spotting for uh, for an attack if he wants it. And look at that, even making cannons in the middle of the map is wow. Zest. Wow. Well, why not, you know? Look at this, he's going to try to pull the army out of position with the Stalkers and maybe just come from behind or maybe just even trade them for some more expensive units. Yeah, I, I guess he's getting like a yeah. ton more Archons. Eight Templar on the way. I love it. Whoa. Yeah, no doubt it could be a ton of Zealots to follow that up as well. It's, you know, at this point, Stalkers... Not very useful at all. Yeah, and the thing about this in PvP, it's just one fight. He just needs the best composition for this one fight. He knows, like, even if he's building up a bank, it's not going to matter because his entire army is going to die if he loses the fight. So he's just trying to make the best composition. Well, he's already pretty much already got the most perfect composition, right? Like, with this yeah. many Tempests, enough to one-shot Colossi. He just wants to make it even more perfect. <laughs> he just wants to go for the perfect game. A lot of hallucinations coming out on Colossi. It's going to make it a little bit harder for targeting for Zest. Some of these Tempests a little bit out of position. The blink coming down. Oh, yeah. And he's targeting those actually hallucinated Colossi first. I don't think it'll even matter, though. There's simply too many Archon Zealots behind it. And everything's just getting wiped out. Yeah, man. A lot of the Stalkers in the army for Daisy just not doing much. And four Colossi living for now, but Zest has got three plus the Tempest and not even enough anti air right now to deal with the Tempest. I think Zest just totally overrides this one. Oh man, even an Oracle nearly oh, kills an Archon. One health! Oh my god. Big blink. We got a follow up of six gateways from Zest. I think he's up to like 16 right now. He's got yeah. a ton of gateways. Yeah, with that many bases, yeah, might as well, man. Look at that bank. It's up to 2k, 1k. Whoop him whatever he wants. Looks like Daisy trying to make some more Zealot Archons. And a decent mix of Stalkers, I guess, just to deal with the Tempest eventually. But still really liking Zest's position here. He's had those four bases for a while, a lot longer than Daisy has. I think he finally secured that one up there on the high ground on the left side, but it doesn't look like he's got any mining over there anyway. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing there. Not making any use of it now. Actually going to be transferring as Zest moves up. So he knows exactly what's going on here. Yeah. Look at this. He actually just cuts off the army. And he's going to start working on that gas. Maybe just setting up a nice concave here, actually, to fight Daisy's army on that ramp. And oh, my, oh god. my god. That concave. Yep. Concave of Archons to deal with everything. Zest is kind of doing everything perfectly in this game. Showing the better experience, I feel like, in this matchup, especially oh. in the mid game. Oh, some DTs coming Ooh, in. Oh, cheeky play. You know, Creator did the same exact thing to Zest. <laughs> That's true, actually. He's just going to GG out. He knows, even with that cannon in there in the middle of the map. But that cannon in the middle of the map <laughs> solving problems. <laughs> 
So nicely done. Zest takes the win. Pretty drawn out games. They uh, they are pretty one sided. Eventually, they they do just yeah. lost. They go the distance. It's just the nature of the games, you know. Like Zerg versus Mech. Life couldn't quite kill Hack in that game, and then Zest in a cross map PVP that went past the early stages. And we have these two long games, but in the end of the day, it's going to be 2-0 for KT. We're going into Stats versus um, Alive. That's right. In that yeah. matchup, I, I feel like Stats is the super heavy favorite. Could be the, the more favorited match of the, of the night, actually. Uh, this one's going to be pretty hard for Alive. We actually have not seen his TVP this season either. Yep. We actually uh, saw him in the back in the makeup room, and he was kind of... Looking scared, man. Just his body language was just not good today, I have it was, to be honest. It was very negative. Very yeah. negative body language there. I was worried for him. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard, you know, being on a team right now that's 05. You don't really get to come out that often. You're going up against Stats, a guy who is a massive uh, PVT player and uh, just in general a really strong opponent. 8-2 and two right now in Pro League. And uh, he got to the round of four actually of the SSL in the last season as well. Going down to Maru. Right, 4-2. Four 4-2. Two. Four two. Yeah. yeah. Very, one of the best players, uh, best Protosses in career easily. Flash is just standing there. He's like, oh, do I really have to set up? Like, uh -huh. I, I'm sure he, he hopes he doesn't have to because if he has to go up against Pet, he could very well lose that game. And yeah, they could go to an ace match from that. Definitely happened. It's like the one upset that could happen tonight.